thumbnail sketch of what is what is this worldview? How would you put it into just a couple of sentences? Sure. So it definitely is uh, coming out of this critical tradition, beginning with Marx and the Frankfurt School. But there are actually a lot of sources it's drawing upon. So it actually draws a lot on post-colonialism from people like Franz Fanon, um, critical pedagogy by from, from Freire and Giraud, and a lot of other black feminism, Bell Hooks, Audre Lorde. So there are a lot of uh, different streams that flow into this river that we're, that we're mm -hmm. seeing uh, overrunning the culture right now. The name, again, people call it cultural Marxism. I don't like that term. People call it intersectionality, identity politics. Uh, the label doesn't matter to me. There's no, the, probably the most technically correct term would be critical social justice. That's a term that Robin D'Angelo uses, the author of White Fragility. Uh, but, you know, call it what you want. But the four, and like colloquially, it's probably known as wokeness. Uh, you know, it's pejorative maybe, but I've seen people that are, consider themselves woke use the term too. So that, that stuff, whatever you want to call it, I call it contemporary critical theory. There are four big ideas. I'll run through them quickly. The first big idea is that uh, society is divided into oppressed groups and oppressor groups along lines of race, class, gender, sexuality, physical ability, status, exceptionality, uh, religion, uh, and so age, and so forth. So you can divide all of society into these oppressor and oppressed groups, number one. They're divided primarily through what's called hegemonic power. So the oppressor groups have what's called hegemonic power. That's the power to impose their values, their norms, and their uh, rules on society. And those norms and values are taken for granted as, as objective and natural and uh, universal. So what we take for granted as common sense are actually the values of the ruling class, whether that is men or whites or heterosexuals or the rich. And so we all imbibe that. But then uh, third, lived experience, the lived experience of oppressed people, whether it's people of color or women or LGBTQ people, that lived experience gives those oppressed groups the ability to see through these hegemonic narratives. So they can realize, oh, what you're calling natural and objective and universal is actually the self-interested rules of the ruling class that justifies their own power. So then those oppressed people can stand up and say, no, that's not true. Here's the way that reality really is. And then finally, number four, we should then work for social justice which is the, uh, the dismantling of these oppressive hegemonic systems that produce social inequality. So one, the social binary, oppressed and oppressor. Two, the idea that repressed through ideologies like the patriarchy, white supremacy, um, heter heteronormativity, cisgender normativity, these things, those oppress us. Number three, the lived experience of marginalized oppressed groups gives them special insight into truths to which oppressors are blinded and then for the goal is social justice, which means the tearing down of all these unjust systems and structures and these oppressive discourses. So that's, again, in a nutshell, is what we're seeing today expressed in, I say, a variety of venues, whether it's government, uh, whether it's um, uh, so on social media, entertainment, and unfortunately, increasingly within the church. Mm -hmm.